it was the Viking lander and the Viking orbiter. So 1976, we had Mars handed to us on a plate. And uh, what compared to what we knew before Viking, Viking was like giving us that planet. Whereas before it had just been a red dot, it had been Bradbury's land. You know, it was a vague place to put your story. And we knew some things, but not many. Um, in fact, Percival Lowell's vision with the canals and everything stayed dominant right up th through to the 50s and then Viking blew it all up. But Viking gave us a place and I thought, man, at the same time we were given Mars, we were given the concept of terraforming by Carl Sagan and that whole crowd of scientists going, you know, humanity probably has enough technological power to transform a planet to a more Earth-like space. And what's the perfect candidate for it? Oh my gosh, Mars. I think that their interest in terraforming and their interest in Mars were simultaneous. That, in other words, understanding that Mars was within the habitable zone, that it had a lot of frozen water, that it had volatiles, that it could be terraformed, that its gravity wasn't horribly light. Um, there's a reason why terraforming theory and Mars knowledge came at the same time. And there I had my story. Let's tell the story of terraforming Mars. Well, now this was daunting. It was going to take a couple hundred years. I needed the multiple point of view. I needed time lapse um, photography. I needed to invent a style that was neither dramatization nor summarization, but was what uh, a, a certain critic called um, the pseudo iterative, the things that happen every day for a year, except it's not exactly the same thing. The patterns of behavior, if you write those down, and you have the multiple points of view. The Mars trilogy came together. At that point, it was maybe my sixth or seventh novel, and I just dove off the edge of the diving board. I was breaking all kinds of workshop rules, but I never believed in the workshop rules anyway. So that wasn't a much of a stretch for me. And the science fiction readership was totally supportive, which isn't to say that, I mean, the Red Mars was widely hated, but it was more widely loved. It was obviously different. And, but the great thing to say about the science fiction community and that's spread to the world at large is there's a lot of generous readers out there that don't mind a different style if it gets them a good story. And as for the science, I had Chris McKay at NASA Ames. I could call any scientist I wanted on the phone and just try to get them to shut up when I was done with them. They're very um, generous with their time. They wanna talk about their specialty and the Mars community was tight in those years. I had every Mars book ever written, I swear to God, and it was only like two bookshelves. I was finding everywhere, the Mars underground, Chris McKay, Robert Zubrin, Penny Boston, Carol Stoker. These people were at University of uh, Colorado Boulder in the late seventies, and they were planetologists and the Mars information from Viking was blowing their mind. And so the Mars underground would stage conferences at Colorado, at Boulder, and put out giant conference uh, books. The Case for Mars, one, two, three, four. These are big uh, turquoise covered trade paperback style. And they were scientific papers on, well, what's the best glove if you're on the Martian surface? And how would you build bricks out of Mar Martian dust? That kind of detail. And I, I just gleaned those books. Everything in Red Mars on the technical level comes out of the Mars underground of the late 70s at, at, at uh, Boulder. So there was real scientists who were giving me the, the, the stuff that I could then build my society out of. And obviously I, I needed to do more than just the technical stuff. It was not, I'm not an Andy Weir. I, we're not gonna go into that level of detail at that stuff, but to have that underneath the historical story, the political story, it was very important to the to making Red Mars feel real. I love that cast. And one of the things is that I don't know any of them. They all came out of nowhere. They all came out of the necessities of the plot. You needed some, I needed somebody opposed to terraforming. So slowly Anne Claiborne came out of the clay and said, I can do that. I needed a, a, a nerd scientist, pure state, and so sax, of course. I needed a builder, and I needed Russians and Americans, so I had Nadia and Maya and Arkady. And so they kind of came out of the necessities of the plot, but then they, they, they blossomed into real people for me. It was like Calvin and Hobbes. If you remember Calvin and Hobbes, when outside people look at Calvin and Hobbes, and Hobbes is this stuffed little doll. 
um, and it's very funny because in Calvin's mind, the majority of the comic strip, um, Hobbes is absolutely fluid, alive. He's as, more alive than Calvin, practically. Well, for me, those characters, I think one thing was giving them a lot of space and time and room to grow, a lot of words. Uh, I think the Mars Trilogy is something almost 2,000 pages. So there's a room. And each one of those characters would get an entire novella to themselves. So you'd get Nadia for 50 pages, really get used to her. And then you go to Maya for 40 pages and go, oh my gosh, I, I never thought of Nadia that way before until Maya looked at her and vice versa. They're like sisters. They went on like that through the whole thing. And really none of them are based on anybody except for a small minor thing is whenever I wanted Sax Russell, Sax or Fred Russell to be the purest of pure scientists and say something um, hilariously scientific, I would think about what my wife would say because she's a chemist. So there's a lot of my wife in Sax Russell. And that's the only part of the entire Mars trilogy's cast of characters that has any relation to anybody that I know or, or, I mean, they all come out of me, but it's me reading and thinking and watching other people, but they were new to that plot. Now say, I put that in distinction to something like the Gold Coast where my friends and family were obviously and myself were obviously the basis for those characters. So, but the Mars trilogy is strong because I got away from autobiography and from personal life and got into something bigger than that. 